Greetings, church. My name is the Reverend Clark Stein, and on behalf of the good people that make up Hudson United Methodist Church, we're really glad that you've joined us for our worship opportunity this morning. Special Happy Mother's Day and Ascension Sunday today. We celebrate two um, really important events on one Sunday, and I think as we spend some time together, you'll see how they kind of mesh together in some pretty neat ways. I do want to make an announcement, and this is really for the entire community. Um, due to some cancellations, we now have three, three open spots for our mission trip uh, to the Appalachia Service Project um, June 13th to 19th in Kentucky. If you are interested, we just simply ask that you please contact Bill Centrello or the church office, um, and we'd sure like to make plans to bring you along with us if that's something that your heart is moving you to do. So as we talk about Ascension Sunday and Mother's Day together today, I hope that as we spend time together, you'll see how interrelated the two notions are. Uh, for really, we're talking about Jesus with a leave taking from the disciples and leaving a great amount of love that he had shared with them, but they ultimately have to carry on on their own. I think you might see some parallels to Mother's Day. If not, why don't you join us as we continue in our worship together? Would you pray with me, please? Oh well, Lord, we do thank you for opportunities like this. For even though we had planned to be outside, uh, the cold weather and the rain has brought us back indoors to record a worship experience that we share together. We're still in the middle of this pandemic time trying to figure out how to safely move forward, but when we come together in ways like this, we have learned over the last year or so that your community still surrounds us in powerful ways. So as we come together today, a community that may be apart by distance, but all tuned in to one thing, um, it's solely in praise of you that we gather to worship. So we pray that your spirit would surround us, that you'd place your hand on each and every one of us, and that as we make our way through this worship hour together, each of us would feel empowered by your spirit to go out into your world in the next week, to tell good news, and to encourage people to become disciples of Jesus Christ. For in all things, we give you praise and glory. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.
Good morning, everyone. We have gathered in the presence of the God in whom every family in heaven and on earth receives its name. We come in the prayer that the peace of Christ might dwell in our family relationships. We come in the prayer that the peace of God might permeate the life of the human family. May the love of Christ fill our hearts, our lives, and our world. To the glory of God, we come to worship. Please join me in our affirmation of faith. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, and to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our scripture reading for this morning comes from 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 through 11. So be content with who you are, and don't put on airs. God's strong hand is on you. He'll promote you at the right time. Live carefree before God. He is most careful with you. Keep a cool head. Stay alert. The devil is poised to pounce and would like nothing better than to catch you napping. Keep your guard up. You're not the only ones plunged into these hard times. It's the same with Christians all over the world. So keep a firm grip on the faith. The suffering won't last forever. It won't be long before the, this generous God, who has great plans for us in Christ, eternal and glorious plans they are, will have you put back together and on your feet for good. He gets the last word. Yes, he does. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. We are so glad that you are joining us for worship today. And for our kids and families who are joining us at home, I have a message for you from our scripture. In our scripture today, Jesus is talking to his disciples about promises right before he ascends to heaven. Jesus promises us the Holy Spirit and asks us to spread the good news of the gospel. And then at the end of the passage, we are promised that Jesus will return someday. The disciples were probably feeling really sad to see Jesus uh, go up to heaven, to see their friends leave them. But Jesus made them a promise. He promised them the Holy Spirit to be with them always. When they felt joy, when they felt sadness or anger, or when they felt alone, the Holy Spirit would always be with them. 
they could have peace knowing that they weren't alone. And the Holy Spirit is with us too. God made the same promises to us today. We don't have to be alone because we know that God is always with us. He gives us the Holy Spirit to empower us to tell others the good news of the gospel. And Jesus promises us too that someday he will return. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for being with us today and for being with us always. Thank you for giving us the promise of the Holy Spirit that we know that you are with us no matter what we are going through or wherever we go. And we thank you that you will return again one day. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you pray with me, please? O God of our parents and God whom we call mother and father, we praise you for giving birth to the human race, for creating love between man and woman, for the gift of sexuality in all of its forms, for the succession of generations, for the preservation of human life, for the protection of family life. Today we give you thanks for mothers and motherhood for the home where life is nurtured, for marriage when committed love is enjoyed, for parenting that passes on your love to children, for ties that continue after the nest is empty. We pray for families within our church family, that in the context of unity, differences can be aired, disagreements discussed, decisions made without continuing conflict, brooding bitterness, or unresolved anger. In a changing world where marriage seems not to be held in high honor, where divorce seems to be more easily chosen, where family ties seem ever more fragile, we pray for the home in the midst of change. Guide us into ways of helping couples prepare for marriage that lasting relationships might be formed. Keep us searching for ways to strengthen present marriages that joy will be found in the continuing covenants and lead us in tending the tender ties of family life, that parenting will be primary and not secondary to career or any other pursuits of life for those who have chosen to have children. We pray to you, creator of covenants, and sustainer of life. We pray this day for all in our community and beyond who are suffering from illness. And we pray first for the presence of people to come alongside and to offer help. And as those relationships move forward down the path of life, we pray for your healing touch that health and wholeness might result. As we're gathered here together today, we're mindful of our world and the need for peace. We raise our cries once again today for peace. And we're mindful of the many ways that you call us out to be your disciples, to help impact the world in small and large ways. Give us courage, give us strength for the journey. As we're gathered together today, we are mindful of those whose lives touch our own fellowship and stand in some need. And we pray also that you would reach down and speak to each of us in the situation in which we find ourselves. For in the strength of this time of covenant together, we would share a time of silence and simply ask that you meet each and every one of us right where we are. O oh Lord, we lift up all of these people and concerns and place them firmly in your hands as together we would pray the prayer that Jesus taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. I want to thank Danica for that beautiful song. It made me choke up a little bit. <laughs> um, happy Mother's Day to all the amazing mothers that are joining us for worship today. I'm Cheryl Gamble, and I am the co-president of the Hudson United Methodist Women. I'm filling in for Sandy Berner today, who is our United Methodist Women's mission coordinator. This morning, I would like to share our United Methodist Women Mission for Moment, Gifts from the Heart. Gift from the Heart will be supporting Heart for the City and the Center of Hope. This is an annual Hudson United Methodist Women's Mission Outreach Project. I would like to take a couple minutes to share information about our recipients. Heart for the City is a mission church and outreach center 
in the Goodyear Heights neighborhood of Akron. They focus on embracing diversity and offering hope to all who access their service. At Heart for the City, hope begins with their food pantry. Heart for the City continues to be the little church on the hill that will be there no matter what. They partner with the Akron-Canton Regional Food Bank to bring their direct distribution program the first Thursday of each month. They distribute approximately 10 to 15,000 pounds of food. They have continued to keep their food pantry operational during the pandemic by creating a drive through model for their clients, whose lives were already on the brink and have been greatly affected by the pandemic. From March 2020 through March 2021, they have served 3,980 households and a total of 12,299 clients. With your generous donation, we can contribute greatly to their food supply throughout the year. Our second recipient of our mission project is Center of Hope. Center of Hope is located in Portage County and provides hot meals and food assistance to a disadvantaged resident of Portage County. The Center of Hope is dedicated to enhancing the nutrition of low-income people in Portage County where local food pantries are not present. Hot meals are offered at no cost five days a week, and they typically serve 75 to 100 individuals per day. In Portage County, there are 25,000 residents that are food insecure. The Center of Hope offers groceries, warm meals, comfortable and supportive environment. Your monetary donation will enhance the well-being of many individuals in their community. 30% of their food is contributed by the community. 70% involves purchases at the regional food bank. For every dollar donated, it is the equivalent of $4 in retail food. Our gifts from the Heart Mission Project will continue through May 23rd. We hope you will consider, consider giving a donation to help us support these outreach missions. Checks could be made payable to Hudson United Methodist Church, and please note on the memo, Gifts from the Heart. Please mail your donation to the church. We will graciously pass along your generous gifts in support of Heart for the City and the Center of Hope. Please give from the heart. Thank you. Our scripture reading for this morning comes from the book of Acts, beginning in the first chapter at the first verse. And Luke wrote these things. Dear Theophilus, in the first volume of the book I wrote on everything that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he said goodbye to the apostles, the ones he had chosen through the Holy Spirit and was taken up to heaven. After his death, he presented himself alive to them in many different settings over a period of 40 days. In face-to-face -face meetings, he talked to them about things concerning the kingdom of God. As they met and ate meals together, he told them that they were on, on no account to leave Jerusalem, but must wait for what the Father promised, the promise you heard from me. John baptized in water, you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And soon. Well, when they were together for the last time, they asked, Master, are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel now? Is this the time? And he told them, you don't get to know the time. Timing is the Father's business. What you'll get is the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes on you, you will be able to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, all over Judea and Samaria, even to the ends of the world. And these were his last words. As they watched, he was taken up and disappeared in a cloud. And they stood there, staring into the empty sky. And suddenly two men appeared in white robes. And they said, you Galileans, why do you just stand here looking up in an empty sky? This very Jesus who was taken up from among you to heaven will come as certainly and mysteriously as he left. 
And these are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Would you pray with me, please? Oh God, we thank you for the homes in which we were nurtured and for the love that our mothers and fathers had for us. We thank you also for the, for the new birth that Christ offers through your love and for the larger family we find in the church and among the people of the world. Through the power of your spirit, make us alive to love and serve you in our families, our church, and our world. Make us your true children in Jesus Christ. Amen. On May 23, 1785, Ben Franklin wrote about his new invention, the bifocal eyeglasses. He claimed that his invention permitted two ways of looking. Well, the event that we call the Ascension of Christ is also about two ways of looking. On Ascension Day, Christ met with his disciples, and they asked him, Lord, will it Will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And the disciples wanted to see their national kingdom restored. And Jesus answered by picturing for them instead a worldwide mission. Halford Luckock cited this scene as an example of the contrast between restorers and creators. Luckock, in his book, Marching Off the Map, recalled the great fire which destroyed most of London in 1666, and people said, let's not restore the old crowded city, let's create a new city. So Sir Christopher Wren, the architect, prepared a design for rebuilding London. But then the real estate interests stepped into the planning, and they felt that anything new threatened their particular property, so they hurried to restore the old maze of narrow, winding streets. The restorers defeated the creators. One hundred years later in Philadelphia, the creators won. There were loyalists in 1776 who wanted to restore the old ties with England. At Independence Hall, a group of men said, no, let's not restore the old. Let's create something brand spanking new and a new nation emerged from the decision made there. Well, we meet this morning on our observance of Ascension Sunday, as well as with the joy of remembering our mothers on Mother's Day. And when we look at these two things at first blush, they may not seem to have too much in common. Yet I've been struck by the notion that in both instances, we celebrate the joy of the creators. Yet in each instance, the joy is only made complete by cutting the ties that have bound folks so closely in the beginnings of relationship. Now, Jesus spent years in close relationship with the disciples. He came to know each of them intimately. He taught them. He encouraged them. He nurtured them. He challenged them. And then he stood back and allowed them to try their own wings only to gather together with them once more, listening as they told of the many things that they had seen and done. He had tried to prepare them for the day when they would eventually be left on their own. And he must have noted how dependent that they had become on his own physical presence. They were always asking questions, seeking to understand. And they had come to accept that Jesus would just always be there, but this Ascension Day, he physically left them behind, returning to God's right hand. And by his leave-taking, he also assumes a place of power for the disciples, interceding on their behalf when they embolden themselves to ask for his help. Well, we recall our mothers, I think, in much the same way. Lifetimes of nurture and care, of kissing hurts and well-cooked meals of challenge and growth and places that have been cleared out for us to provide both security and rest. All of the little ways that moms prepare their kids for the eventuality that someday they too will be left on their own. The memories of time spent together, of lessons well learned, of skills and stories shared, and 
they often last a lifetime for those who have been well mothered. It seems to me that the kind of love we're talking about here is the kind that can envision a future beyond where we are right now. It is given by folks who have high hopes for where we are going and who recognize potential for us, so much so that they give of themselves that we might have life. Life begets life. There's a practicality to this kind of loving as well. A psychologist, an engineer, and a theologian were on a hunting trip when they came upon an isolated cabin and they knocked on the door. No one answered, so they entered and immediately saw a large pot-bellied stove suspended in mid-air by wires attached to the ceiling. Each man speculated. The psychologist said, well, this lonely trapper isolated from humanity has elevated his stove so he can curl up under it and vicariously experience a return to his mother's womb. The engineer theorized, well, the man is practicing laws of thermodynamics and has discovered a way to distribute heat throughout the cabin. Next, the theologian. Hanging the stove from the ceiling has a religious meaning. Fire lifted up has been a religious symbol for centuries. Just then the trapper returned, met his guests, and when asked about the stove, explained, had plenty of wire, not much stovepipe. So this love business is really incredible and quite practical too. Jesus for us and his disciples, a mother's for her children. But I think it's equally incredible how that love and nurture equips us in powerful ways to go out on our own, empowered by the way we've been loved, to love in return, shown how to give of our own lives, that those who mean so much to us in our everyday walks might also live. It is a tender, simple act, played out every day and will be, I think, to the end of time. For all who are given life, our sons and daughters of the Most High God, May we be about the business of creating ever-widening circles for each other, places of sanctuary that all might feel at home here, bound together in the wonder of it all and in love for one another. Today, we celebrate the tremendous gift of life and of love, and I think that it can always be made new. Praise be to God. Amen.
now, my friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord turn his face toward you, look upon you with favor, grant you peace. Depart in peace. Amen.